All right, what's going on guys? Uh, this is Tosker. I haven't made a video in a while and I've been working on a project and I found one thing useful and I thought, you know, it might be a good idea to make a video on it. So we're going to talk about using the relative source class in WPF as well as using the visual tree in the WPF debugger. Now first, the relative source is a class that implements a markup extension to kind of describe or point to a location of a relative bound source. Now that's a lot of word salad in there, but we're gonna get a better idea of what this means. So in our project here, I just set up a simple relay command, which I have covered, and an observable object, which I also have covered. So the main points here is we have a main view model, or a main window view model, and a list view view model. So our main window view model we have here is going to be obviously the context of our main window. And in here, we're gonna skip over list view for a second. We have a remove name command. And we'll instantiate that command here in the constructor. And then we also have it assigned to our method called remove name, where we pass it a string and we tell the list view in its name collection to remove it. So that brings us over here to our list view view model. And when we click that, we see it's nothing more than a simple observable collection of strings called names. And in the constructor, we give it some elements here, such as Joe, Jane, John, Jessica, and Matt. I put Matt there because there were too many J's. Um, <laughs> but anyways, so what we're going to do is we're going to have a list view item bound to this string. And it'll have a button within it that will invoke the remove command. So one thing you may notice right off the bat is we may have a problem here because we're obviously going to bind the list view to this view model and then it's going to have a list view with the item source bound to names. Now if we create a button in our list view items and we try to call the remove command it doesn't exist within this context. Uh, so where we have it is our main view our main window view model which is its parent. So we have to be bound to a source in this class and invoke a command in this class, its parent. Now there are a lot of ways we could do this, so don't focus too much on uh, other ways we could have done this. There's another project that I was working on where any other way really was impossible, and I didn't want to show you that complicated project because that would be harder to understand. So just understand this is portraying the idea of it. So we're going to hop over to our main window here, and we're going to start setting up our project. Now, what we're first going to do is create a simple grid, and we're going to have another grid inside of it. So we'll start off with creating a grid uh, column, whoops, grid dot column definitions, and we're just going to create two column definitions here. If you're not familiar with grids, I also have a video on that. So now we have our one grid and I just want to create a list view over here in the left column. Now I also want that list view to be inside of a grid because perhaps in the future I want to add some other things in this left panel. So we're going to create another grid and we'll give it to column zero. And we're also going to set its data context. Uh, before we do that, actually, though, we should go up to our window here outside the grid and set our data context. So window, data context, get our local namespace here, and we'll bind it to the main window view model. So now that we have that, we're going to go to our grid, going to say data context, binding, and we should see, actually, that's going to be a little weird. So we're just going to do list view, which if we go to our main window view model here, that is the name of our property. So now we get to create our list view. This will just fill up the entire grid that we created here. Uh, we're going to give it a item source binding names. So since we're bound to the list view, we want to bind to the name collection it has. And we'll open that up. And here we see our little list pops up in the designer. Now, like I mentioned, I want them each to have a button in their items and I can just remove them that way. So we need to create a list view item template, which I have also covered. 
and we're going to access the list view dot item template call a data template for the item it's representing and we'll simply make it a stack panel it's going to look a little ugly but that's unimportant and we'll have a text block obviously to represent the string so we'll just bind it directly the text property directly to the string and it looks normal again but we also want to give it a button and content we'll say remove we'll close that off so now we have each list view item with a remove button associated with it so like i mentioned if we take a look down here we see we're bound to not only just the item source names but the list view and if we go through that portion here we see that when I bind uh, when I want to bind a command that's not going to be possible in this situation so we'll go back to our main window view model and we're going to use a relative source so in our button here I'm going to call command binding now as we're going to proceed to grab a uh, parent context within our uh, current view we need to understand that we are getting the data context. So whenever we want to access the command, we have to call data context first. And I'll touch more on that in a second. And we're calling it the remove, whoops, remove name command. So remove name command. So obviously right here, this isn't going to work for us. So we need to grab a relative source. So we grab the relative source, uh, relative source again. And now this is where we'll set the mode. So when we set the mode, we see here we have many options. What we want to do is we want it to find an ancestor, meaning somebody above it in the hierarchical chain of the XAML. So we'll say find ancestor. We're also going to tell it the ancestor type. So what type of ancestor within our XAML is it looking for? Um, obviously we want it to access the grid. And we'll notice here, though, we have more than one grid. We have the first grid it's in and the second grid it's in. So we could easily count one, two. We'll go back over here and we have something called ancestor level and we'll set it to two. So now we should, when we bind to the command, we should go past this grid and say, nope, this is the grid I want. We'll bind to its data context which because we set it to the window, uh, the grid here is automatically going to inherit its parent's data context. So we don't need to set that. And then once we get its data context, that means it should have the remove name command because it should be of the main window view model. But we also remember that we had a string parameter to send. So we'll access the command parameter of the button. We'll say binding and we'll simply just bind again to the string that this data template is for. So if we run our application real quick, see everything's okay here. We have our little view and select our items and I'm going to go to remove John and Jessica and it doesn't seem to be working. Now why is this the case? Well, if we look in our little debugger here, we see we have an error of binding expression path. So the remove name command was not found in the object list view view model. So there's something going on here. We'll stop debugging and we'll take a look. And we see here we have everything right. Bind ancestor to grid and level two. So what could be the problem? Well, the problem is, is when we're doing relative source, uh, sometimes what we see may not always be the case. So when we look at our ancestor level, let's run our application one more time. And this is where we're going to use the WPF debugger here. And over to the left, we'll see go to live visual tree. Now this is really interesting. All right, guys, don't get scared. I had to cut the video real quick because I made this after I already recorded the video. Um, but if you do not see the WPF tool in your window, uh, you might not be displaying it. So you want to go over here to debug. You want to go to options. Then when this pops up, you want to go down here to debugging, general. 
And as we scroll down here, we want to see this option of enable UI debugging tools for XAML. And you want to make sure that this is checked. And once that's checked, you should be able to see the tool in your window as you're debugging. Back to the video. And uh, XAML debugging. So we'll open up our border here. Our content presenter is our window content here. Obviously we have a grid. And if we go down, we see our grid and our list view. And we see our scroll content presenter, the items. So here are all of our list view items. So what we're saying in our XAML is we're telling this list view item to find its ancestor grid at a level two. Well, as we go up here, we see grid one, grid two. This is the window grid. This is what we want to bind to, but it seems that we're binding to this or we're grabbing this with the relative source. Now, the reason we have this is because in our scroller view for list view, it actually automatically has a grid, even though we didn't set it. That's how this content is displayed. So although we don't see it and in our XAML here, we can count grid one to grid two. That's not actually the case. Go back to our tree. So we need to actually go past this. We want level three. So we're going to stop uh, debugging. I'm going to scroll down here. I'm going to change our ancestor level to three. And now when I run the application, we should see here in our list that we have, when we click remove, it'll appropriately do so. So remove, remove. So it's pretty interesting. Um, wanted to, eh, can't get too technical on it really, but I may as well, while we're here, cover some other things on the WPF debugger. So we had our live visual tree where we could just see our entire XAML and how it's mapped out. Um, but sometimes too, you may not want to dig through some of this. It may be a little confusing. Now, what we also have is enable selection. So if I wanted to find where in the visual tree this remove button was, once I opened it up, I can click on the enable selection and we'll see this little red highlighter here. And once I click on the button, it'll clearly present it here and highlight it for me. As for other buttons, it'll just bring it to the visual tree. Now I just wanted to show this because I think it's rather interesting. Um, it's very useful in WPF debugging and I haven't made a video in a while. So I figured I'd make one on this. I have finals coming up, so that's why I haven't been making videos for a while, and I want to stay on topic here, but I wanted to throw that out there. So, uh, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. Leave comments, like, subscribe if this was useful, uh, and yeah, thanks for watching.